Indeed, indeed, indeed. As we get ready for the next segment, my wife is right here. It's called Words of Encouragement, amen. A few little pieces she put together as we come to encourage each other in Jesus, amen. It's all about encouragement as we walk that narrow way. We're blessing this evening. Are you ready, my love? Yes, I am. Amen. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace to you too. Amen. What do we have this evening? Um, this evening, um, we're just going to touch base on um, the foundation, expression of wisdom. But before I start, I want to say a good evening to each and everyone out there. And thanks once again for listening. Okay. Um, like I said, um, wisdom, it's foundation and expression. <clears throat> Fear of the Lord is the foundation for wisdom. The prerequisite for obedience and the accompaniment of love. Uh, many times when um, we're in school, especially in college, we normally have certain classes to take before we can go into some major classes. And some of those classes, they call them like your prereq. Um, your prerequisites you have to take this in order for you to get this so if you don't have it you cannot do certain classes you cannot move forward so um, here the fear of the Lord is the foundation for wisdom is the prerequisite you must have you must be fearful of our Lord and Savior and this is the obe the um, prerequisite for obedience and it accompanied love. Um, Deuteronomy 10, 12. And it reads. It says here. And now Israel. What does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God. To walk in all his ways. And to love him. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul. Not part of, but all of. Moving forward. Fearing the Lord and loving Him again. And it basically, it's, it's if you don't do it, whatever that you're doing, which is opposite of this, it's inseparable response. That's what you're going to get. So basically, if you are not fear of God, you will do things that are not pleasing to God. The book of Proverbs is permitted with those admonitions. Proverbs 1, 7, 31, 30. Okay, I'm good. Proverbs 7, um, Proverbs 1, 7, and it reads, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So if you are not fearful of God, you will you are actually a fool because you are despising the wisdom and instructions of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of God. Moving forward. Also, Psalms thirty one thirty gives another explanation of this Psalms 31 30 says charm is deceitful and beauty is passing but a woman who fears the Lord she shall be praised so yes um, a person may be all charming and beautiful and that will help you pass yes because you're beautiful somebody will say well okay she's beautiful and um i will let her pass whatever but um if you fear if you're not fearful of the lord it's like there's no praise but because it says here a woman who fears the lord she shall be praised so yes you will pass but there'll be no praise in this equation so it's necessary it's basically telling you you we need to fear god we need to be fearful of god not of man but of god okay um other wisdom literature that support this i just um say about being fearful is ezekiel twelve thirteen. And Ezekiel twelve thirteen says here 
let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. It is all that we have to do, fearing God. We need to fear God. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. However... Bear with me as I read. I have tried to get the scripture to go in with whatever I'm saying. So um, it may take a little longer. And um, here, the prophets echo the same. The same thing that um, in Proverbs 1, 17 and 31 and 30, the, Proverbs, the prophets, they did the same thing in Ezekiel 12, 13. Ezekiel 12 13 tells us Tells us, sorry, Ezekiel tells twelve thirteen tells us the same, but we're gonna go into Micah six eight. Micah six eight says, and in, in the New Testament, it picks up this emphasis in its description of a gr gentle and quiet spirit. So um, it reads, "He has, <coughs> he has shows you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly." To love mercy and to walk humble with your God. We need to be walking humble with God. And that is in Micah 6 8. And um, I urge that you actually go into the scriptures. You can take your pen and paper and take them in. Because the word of God says to meditate on his word day and night. And the more we search the word of God, the more our eyes open to a lot of stuff and help us be strong in him and steadfast um, because with me I have realized that as I journey through my walk with God the more I stay in the word the more I meditate on the word is the stronger I get and more bold that I get in the things of God so I admonish that you out there who's listening to me right now to do the same <coughs> um Fear, in the sense, indicates submissive reverence and not stark terror. To rejoice this away, which, in, which inspires respectful obedience, is to determine to go your own way. And Proverbs one thirty one says. <coughs> Proverbs 131 says, Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fears. Sorry, let me do that. read that again. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to be full with their own fancies. So, if you eat the fruit of your own way you have your own things doing your own thing and not what god wants you to do you will eat that fruit of your own fancies the all the things that fancy you that's what the fruit you will eat of of your own fruit and not what god fruit not what god will want of you to eat and here we have the promise results of fear in him are goodness, riches, honor, and satisfaction. Now, honor and satisfaction. Psalms 31. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, it's kind of hard when you have to go through the pages of the Bible to get the right scripture. Um, sorry, I didn't write it down. But however, um, I'm going to start with Proverbs 131 and to turn away from God's way. Um, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
Now, um, honor and satisfaction, Psalms 31, 19. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes wasted away with grief. Yes, my soul and my body. So that is for honor and satisfaction. Now to have a right relationship with others, Leviticus 27. 25 17 and it reads therefore you shall not oppress one another but you shall fear your god for i am the lord your god do not oppress one another but rather to fear god because he is our lord and our god now long life deuteronomy 6 2 that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his touches and his commandment which he commands you and your sons and your grandsons all the days of your life and your days may be prolonged. So the other side of this, the opposite of this is if you don't keep all God's statutes and his commandments, you, are, you and your sons your life will not be prolonged. So that's the opposite of Deuteronomy 6.2, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandment, which he commands you to do. He's not just telling you, but he's commanding you to do. And if you don't do it, you and your sons, your grandsons, your life will not be long. Now for mercy, Psalms 103 17 it says but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children so there we see fearing God is such a vital and important thing because if we don't look at what's happening you know like the mercies of God the mercies of our Lord He's saying here in the word that is from everlasting to everlasting. You know, it's, it's not something that is taken away. It's there all the time. But it's for those who fear him and his righteousness to his children, child, children's children. And we have strong confidence. And I like this one. It's Proverbs 14, 26. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. So if you do not have a place of refuge in Christ, so in other words, there's no fear. So there you have no strong confidence. Having no strong confidence you'll have no place of refuge. And this is Proverbs 14, 26. And um, we have the last ones, God's constant attention. God's constant attention. And of course, it's not just you, but this goes for all of us, including myself. Psalm 34, 7 says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Wow, this one I love. Many a times we hear people say, you know, I've heard um, pastors say, and they are totally right that um, we all who have accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we have our angel that is assigned to us. And of course, my pastor, Pastor Randall Ferdinand, this is something he likes. He, he always says that, that, you know, we have an angel that is assigned to us and we have to allow him to work for us, you know. And there are times I've heard people say, oh, um, I'm going to have my angel go and clear this area for me that when I come in I'm going to have a spot to park my car but um, it's not only you just telling the angel because the question is is that angel there um, are you afraid are you afraid of God the almighty God to do what he has asked of you to do his will that this angel will go and get the support for you. Because remember, 
the word of God says the angel of the Lord he's there he, he encamps all around those who fears him not those who doesn't fear so you could uh, we could say well our we have we, all of us have an angel and our angel but the question here is are you afraid of God almighty are you fearful of him are you going to wake up to this morning and say well i'm going to do what i want to do and um just go ahead and just live your life anyhow and then in that same breath saying that I need my angel to do this for me and I know it's not happening that way for your angel to stand with you and encamp around you the Bible says it's for those who fear the Lord that is when this angel will deliver you deliver us okay um, actually this is the end of my um, little piece for today i hope that um you get something out of it if not all and i thank god for each and every one that is listening every i mean faithfully listening to us every sunday you could have been anywhere but you choose to tune in to choice radio and listen and i really thank god for you and i just pray that god continue to bless each and every one once again thank you for listening amen Hallelujah. It's a nice, nice piece concerning fear of God. And, um, you know, as, as I always say, whatever we share with the public is what we have experienced ourselves and things that we're willing to talk about for our own testimony, how we have experienced Christ and what we have came to the knowledge and the understanding we came into ourselves, you know. And and I want to ask you this. Uh, when you, before you actually, as you say, well, You've been in church for a long time, but you finally got saved probably about three years ago, right? Yes, so. Right. Before that, would you consider yourself that you really feared God? Because no. you used to be in party, everything. No, same I wasn't way. afraid. Go ahead, talk I, to me. I wasn't afraid, and I didn't know at the time. Because you see, the Word of God, ha He has everything set out for us to know. And when we take time to really search His Word, we are going to get it. And time to, of course, accept Him. Because, you know, I thought it was okay. I mean, I would go to church, and it was okay for me to actually wear anything that I like to wear, um, go anywhere, like for example, go clubbing, you know, and sit with my friends and drink wine. I find, well, I'm not saying that you cannot drink a glass of wine, that's not what I'm saying, but um, with me, I, am, I don't want any wine at this point in time in my life because I feel I don't need any. But, um, Yes, it was easy, very easy for me to just do, you know, go into a party and get on bad, um, dance from one end of the, the, the dance floor to the next. It and was go very, to church. yeah, and still go to church in uh, the Sunday morning. It was very easy for me. And this is just my testimony. It's the truth. This is my experience that I've had. But now, um, it's a total different thing for me. It's totally different. It's like this, my shell. I'm a different person. This old shell that I had, it, it's like when you look at um, a caterpillar, you know, to me, this is one example I like to to um, use for for a Christian. You know, like the word of God says, when you accept him, you are a new person. You are no longer that old man. And that I know. And like I was talking about a caterpillar, you find this 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 um, cocoon um, that when it goes into this transformation um, becomes a caterpillar. And this, you know, caterpillar butterfly. this beautiful butterfly you know with all those beautiful colors you know and flying like from actually moving from crawling in a cocoon from crawling to flying and i look at um christian christ-like people as that butterfly we were once in that cocoon we started crawling but now we are flying we're really flying. And that's how, I don't know for you out there, but that's how I look at myself. I am flying now in Jesus. You know, because the things that I used to do, I just cannot do it. Now, I'm not saying that there are not certain things I still have to, to work a little more on. But I'm really not that person that was able to go to church on a Sunday 
and sing and worship and listen to the word and then the weekend out you know i am just no longer that person so this is just my story amen. you may have a different one but that's my story hallelujah <laughs> amen well that's that's really what it's about you know the bible says we overcome him by the blood of the lamb the word of the testimony once we come out of different things and different experiences with with christ and with the devil we are able to testify on behalf of god as to what we have seen in our lives so i'm saying to fear god and really be convicted and feel guilty when you are transgressing or doing something or in around the wrong people in the the wrong area and the wrong things that is not conducive to Christian living you, you there is a guilt that come over you Absolutely. and you feel really really bad you, you know what I mean you feel really really bad so this is what I'm, what we're saying is that to fear God is the beginning of wisdom. of wisdom and when you fear God it means that you must have an encounter with God that you can fear him because you cannot fear something that you have never encountered you know there are many things that people hear from different islands or different countries or you might hear well oh there is something that do this in the night and if you pass there this happened that happened i mean just hearing about the story you might think about it in a kind of way like well you know well probably i don't think it sounds scary because you have never encountered it but those who encounter it they have a fear in their speaking because they have encountered it and they know what it means like to feel that kind of way but you just hearing about it cannot really relate to it unless you have experienced it you understand so so the whole thing about it is unless somebody is really born again and experienced Christ in a real tangible way then the conviction does not come the same way for 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 for, for people who have really you know know what, what it means to be serving God and know the difference between being born again and what it means to be a church goer talk to me um i just want to read a little something here um on Solomon because we know that Solomon he he was in his days he was the wisest man in his days and we know that solomon wrote a lot of the old testament and um the songs the of psalms, solomon yeah, and proverbs and the psalms um solomon's strength was not on the battlefield but in the realm of the mind meditation organization planning and negotiation Except for Moses, Solomon wrote more of the Old Testament, like I said, than any other man. The writing of the Song of Solomon is a sign to his youth. Proverbs to his mature years, when he was at the height of his power, and um, Ecclesiastics to his later years, as he reflects on his life and mm -hmm. experience. Amazing, so that's just right? a little excerpt. Uh, I mean, I, I, I look at the transformation from yep. the Psalms to the Proverbs and mm -hmm. then to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. So you see some stuff in Ecclesiastes, man, it's like, wow, you understand? Yep. So you, you know, so it, it like you, that same thing you're saying from the caterpillar mm -hmm. and transforming into the cocoon and then the butterfly is like, you, you know. It's, it's such a transformation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is not something that you, because this is, okay, I'm looking at it like this. You could see a, a, a child growing up the child got tall the child has more hair you know the child start talking but imagine it is something different but you could still see you could see well this is that same child but the child got taller the child hair is again longer and you see that child start becoming a woman if it's a a, 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 a young lady but i mean to come from uh, in a cocoon caterpillar and this beautiful butterfly this is a transformation on beyond you know that's how powerful our lord is and i'm looking at our transformation as this transformation in terms of that butterfly because that is the only time we're able to fly you know you when you on this ground crawling anybody can just step on you and crush you you know the, the pastor can come in and say anything to you and you'll just drink it like a good medicine but guess what it may do no good to the body because you think it's medicine but it's not because what it does is only suppresses you but it heal it doesn't heal you it doesn't cure you of any sickness any disease nothing it just suppresses what you have but when you start flying you start reading that word you know you get all excited about the things of god you know nobody can come in and fool you and step on you and give you any medicine to drink and tell you that you'll be healed because you know for a fact that no this is doing no good to my body this is not for my body because now guess what you flying and not only flying you have all those beautiful colors 
<laughs> because of the word of God. Because you, you of can, the word of God. You, you can see the beauty of the word of God absolutely, now. Absolutely, absolutely. And now people can see your beauty because you actually you're not just being you crawling around. You are transformed. Ah, you are transformed. What's an analogy? You are a different person altogether. In I mean, creation. <laughs> it's funny. I went to a a, a little function yet last night they were actually a friend of mine was uh, having a surprise party for her son that did very very well in school and of course i know it's because uh, of 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 god on his side and this child he graduated from his school with a 4.0 and he was the valedictorian of it i mean it was amazing and to see all his friends came in and they were just seeing all those wonderful things about him but the story is when i got there this young lady who knew me all along that I used to go to the parties and stuff and um she saw me and she she said she I saw she she's looking she's watching and she's saying uh, oh like she's asking who's this person I said to myself yeah you can see this person this person has been transformed I didn't tell her that but that's what I kept saying to myself she's like well I'm seeing like this face look familiar but she just couldn't see it because before I know what she's she was not seeing because before if I had walked in that party all eyes on me Yes, all eyes can be on me now, but all eyes on me would have been in a different category because I would make sure I have that really tight pants, that short skirt and that short, you know, something that is not appropriate for a Christian woman. I would make sure that yes, I got it. You know, and not walking like this. But I thank God today that I went in and I was dressed like the ambassador that I am, the ambassador for Jesus Christ that I am. And this lady, this young lady, just couldn't see that. She couldn't see that I was this person. Because why? I've been transformed. I've Hallelujah. been transformed. Amen. And I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And, and and overall, you know, that's what it's all about, you know. I, I you know, God is an amazing God and he's hoping that our testimonies can help others to get come to the acknowledgement that serving God is real. Being born again is a real transformation. It's not just talking about something, but it's something to really experience. You know, what I mean, we could say we are church people. We go to church. We believe in God and all that. But it's a difference when we are really in the faith, when we are really in Christ, when Christ is aware of us and we are aware of Him and we have encountered Him. So that's all that we share is just to let people understand that there is deeper depths and higher heights. And higher. In the things in Jesus of God, Christ, yeah. and, and and for us to experience it tangibly and know for sure, because we always say that God is not the author of confusion, He's and not. of course, one of the the the, the, the key element of God being not the author of confusion, He said, "Behold." all things have become new he said once you're born again any man in Christ is a new creature so he wouldn't tell you that and then you cannot see the newness you have if you to cannot see, see the newness then you, God is lying and he's you. not he's not a lie he's so not if a he tells you that any man in Christ is a new creature you have to expect something new about you if you are a child of God there must be a transformation in you that is going to say yes well okay he said that happened to me and that happened to me so that's proof that he is God and God is true but if you don't see the transformation Information, you uh, could could say that God is a liar. The problem, <laughs> yes, um, the problem is on you because the word of God says he's not a man that should lie, should ever lie. He is not a liar. The only person that's a liar is the devil and all his minions, all those who follow all those who follow mm. him because he is the father of lies. The devil is the father of lies. He created lies. From the beginning, when he came to the Garden of Eden, from the beginning, he created lies. So, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is not a man that could lie. If there's no transformation in you, you got to know and know and know that this transformation has not taken place. I have to search myself again. We have to search ourselves again because once you see that Christ, the Spirit in you, Jesus, that hope of glory. There must have transformation. Must. You may grow different from your, your brother, your sister, because, you know, everybody's not there at the same level. But there must have a transformation. That's a must. And I repeat, must have a transformation. Because not only am I saying it, I have experienced it with myself and others around me. 
I have seen and it. And one of the scriptures you mentioned concerning security, uh, you know, concerning security, the fear of God brings a security to you that you know for sure that, you know, you, you know that something has happened to you and you know that you are in him and he's in you. The one of the scriptures you have you have read that have that expression in there. But that scripture also, Matthew 10, 28, he said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. So it all comes down to having the experience encountering Christ. Because if you have not encountered Christ, you really couldn't fear somebody that you never met. You know, I could tell you about it, but you won't. Well, to. you see, that's the thing about it. You know, a lot of us will feel well. We we don't see him. We don't have him. We don't know him. Probably that's why some people don't fear him. But he said he's in each and each and every one of us, especially his children. Because here, um, he says here in. Um, let me get it. Um, it's here. I know I have it here. Um, Proverbs fourteen twenty six. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Yes, but there's one that's talk about um, each other that you may fear the Lord your God to keep. No, not this one. But there's a. There, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's not the fountain of life. Um, Proverbs fourteen twenty seven. The fountain of life depart from the snares of death. Mm. I don't know. Be not wise in your own eyes. Oh, here, here it is. It's um, Leviticus twenty five seventeen. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. So, um, this therefore you shall not oppress one another, because you know God is going to punish you. Because remember, He said, if you do something to one of, of this little one, mine, you are yes. doing it unto me. So it's not when they say at least everybody looking at it as maybe it is a baby or a child, but he's talking about the, the list in the kingdom. It doesn't have to be a child, but a person who don't even really know him, like you know him or maybe I know him. If you oppress anybody, like for example, we say we love God, but we have not seen him. So how can we love God and hate our brother and sister? You get you get where I'm and, coming and, from. Yeah, and, and let me you know um, today. I, I mean, I really you know applaud Pastor Fordner because the angle he does be going with the scriptures some, is really amazing. Today, I mean, it was a really refresh awakening for believers who say, who claim, who I mean, all of us who claim that we are believers. Mm -hmm. And he was bringing some scriptures and some bringing some things for. And really and truly, we have to humble to those words. We have to humble to those scriptures. If we only believe and claim and feel that we Christians, we must humble to those scriptures. Because otherwise there is no progress, there is no success, there is nothing happening if we are not going to forgive and love our enemies and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's so much scriptures, you know, Pastor on roll today. So I'm saying those are the foundation things of being a Christian. That's why I say I don't care what nobody say, what they do this, they do this. this. If you cannot love your neighbor, you cannot love each other, you cannot find room in your heart to love you people. You don't love God. Or to <laughs> even, you know, talk about Jesus Christ and salvation and stuff like that. Then how could you really say There's you love God? There's no God in you and the word of God says it very clear how can you say you love him that you have not seen and your brother that you have seen that you are seen how can it be possible you have some special talent I guess. you have a special <laughs> talent indeed amen, indeed amen, amen, you do have a special amen. talent to say you love a man you don't even see him you never know but then you hate your brother right how is that possible the brother that you've seen every day every day in your eyes you pass that brother is on the on on the on the porch you know can't even open your mouth and say good morning brother how you doing today god bless you you can't even open your mouth but yes that same morning you are walking stepping in church and lifting your hands oh thank you jesus i love you jesus i love you jesus which <laughs> jesus you love which jesus you I'm love it's, it's amazing it's, it's amazing. amazing it's amazing <laughs> it's amazing but, but you know um you know overall it's just to awaken us our mental faculties and all of us that's what what whatever we're talking about our testimony is really what breaks the yoke amen when we can can relate from different cross sections and you from a different place i'm from a different place in life and everything 
everything else and from different experiences and we can let people understand what it is that we have experienced and then they have their own experience then we put them together because the bible said that we overcome him by the blood of the the lamb lamb. word of our testimony testimony. so when we testify of the different ways and the different snares that the devil is trying to put up against us the children of god we are able to be victorious because i hear the plan that he should have against you and you hear the plan he have against me Mm -hmm. and you heard the way that i discovered that i was in in error and i hear the way that you discover you was in error now you came in the light now you came into the truth now you come into the true knowledge of god and you have a fear of god now because you have met the man I've met now him. you know what it is I've met to him. know that, that man god from is Galilee. hallelujah <laughs> amen so this is what we're talking about and everything that we express is just our testimony to you that you don't fool yourself and feel that you have something that you don't have because god is not an author of confusion if you said any man in christ is a new creature behold all things become new you have to see that newness in you to confirm that really and truly and i am in the faith and even for us when we share our testimony it's even for us it, it falls right back again to us because why it strengthens us for to see where we were and where we are today it is to strengthen us so we stay steadfast in the things of our lord and savior jesus mm-hmm. christ you know because it's, we, as human beings we turn we tend to forget we tend to forget a lot of people, <laughs> their memory is, I don't know if it is a special talent that they have or it is just natural with them, but a lot of people tend to forget. You know, they come in and they say all the wonderful things about what the Word of God says, but the action says different. So I'm saying this to say when we come in, and this goes for myself. When we come in and we say all those wonderful words and we put it out there, the words from the word of God, we have to make sure that we walk by that word ourselves. Because like the word of God says, it is a two-edged sword. It is sharpened on both sides. If you take it to the left, it's sharpened there. If you take it to the right, it's sharpened. So while I am trying to cut you, I I'm getting cut myself. So while I'm teaching, I am saying what the word of God says. I am indeed, like pastor to say, while I'm cooking, I'm <laughs> eating. <laughs> and that's a very nice way of putting it. You know, I'm not only cooking to, for everybody to, to, to eat, but I am eating also. Amen. And, and one of the key elements concerning all these things that we're talking about, we, we understand that, that, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and, and powers and faith comet by, by hearing, hearing and, and hearing by the by word, the word of, God. of God. If we stop hearing these things that is potential to be the real strength of our Christian walk, then we can fade off and we will fall off because we are not hearing it. Our conscience become just dead because we are not hearing these things. Because all the scriptures I heard today, I mean, they were so like, I mean, they just kind of wake me to a new, even being a new believer, starting all over again and doing or striving to do like what I said, God we tend wants to us forget. to do. We yes. tend to forget. And that is the reason I admonish each and every one out there. That is the reason as Christians, we have to spend time in the word of God. We must make that time out. Like all the other things in our lives, we actually have time to go shopping. Uh, there, there, there are people, I used to do it every Saturday. I want to make sure I go to the farmer's market and get me all my fresh fruits and vegetables because I want to make sure that I eat the right stuff. I get the good stuff to eat. And that was my schedule. And, you know, I was scheduled to do our hair, our nails, and all of those wonderful things, which is not bad. It's all good. But we need to have the Bible, the Word of God into those, in our daily lives. Make it a habit. Make it something that is a lifestyle that we have our time with the Word of God. Because the Word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He didn't say the devil's people, you know. The Word of God did not say the people of the kingdom of darkness. He said, my people. So that means, yes, we accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come in, we said the salvation prayer. 
we going to church every Sunday and we listen to what the pastor says every Sunday. But at the end of that Sunday or whichever day that you mm-hmm. worship, that Bible is in a corner accumulating dust for the following Amen. Sunday. But we need to go into it because again, the word of God says, my people perish for lack of Amen. knowledge. I want, I want to join in with you as you mentioned about lack of knowledge here. Yeah. I just stumbled on this Jeremiah 20, 23 and um, 21. He said, I have not sent this prophets yet they ran i have not spoken to them yet they prophesied but if they had stood in my counsel if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words you understand to hear my words then they should have have turned them from their evil ways and from the evil of their doings amen so if we not functioning right, it means we're not getting the right word. They have a responsibility. Yes. So this, there you go. Those those pastors, those preachers, those teachers, they have a responsibility to tell the people what the word of God. needed to be done. Because if a, as a person, as a pastor, as a teacher, you are actually telling your members or wh- congregation, you may call it, that look, it is important for you to study the word. You need to make time Time to study the word. You 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 tell them that all the time. It becomes part of your teaching to them. They will know that they have to that even not only on Sundays that you guys meet. You guys meet other days in the week that you guys can go ahead and read the word of God. Maybe a person cannot read. You have um, teachers in place or educators in place to really um, teach those people who cannot read the word of God to help them along the way. So that is that is very very deep that those people out there and they're responsible for God's people and they're not doing what they're supposed to do. You know, it's 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 sad and it hurts my heart. It aches me that one of the things that I hear very, very, very often by many, 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 many pastors. I mean, this is every, um, I would say every sentence some of them say is tithes and offering. It hurts me. Seriously, I am very, <laughs> very concerned about the styles and offering stuff. I know it is important and I know um, the bills has to be paid. But you know what? We have to trust God. You know, I got this word from the from the Bible. It says that if a, a man doesn't um, take care of his household, and you'll see where I'm going anyway. If a man doesn't take care of his household, he's an infidel. And I got to find out that an infidel is a person who has no faith so i'm looking at those pastors as being infidels that's how i look them out to be right now because if their main function their main goal is to is to um tithes and offering all the time all the time if you take care of your household you will have no reason to be badging people all the time with tithes and offering because why that fit that you have in God, God is gonna make a way for you you don't have to beg and there are so many other things to teach the people for example hell a lot of people do not know about hell fire they don't know about hell at all they know the word hell they've heard the word hell but do they really know what hell really is and what really happens and what really that what the lord wants out of you that you don't go to this place they don't preach enough on those things mm-hmm. on hatred hallelujah. on forgiveness on 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 a lot and of conver- things being converted because being converted pastors need to teach more on those things and stop being infidels they have seriously well, well, but you know, my wife really and Julia, I mean, you know, um, I, we, we can go in a whole, we can go to a full line. Because that is, things. they're not fear of God. But, but yeah, but the thing about it, we wrestle not against fear, fresh and blood, but against principalities and powers. If these pastors are overtaken by evil spirits, they, they cannot do these things unless they themselves have been delivered. Somebody might think that this sounds strange. There are pastors who need to be delivered that they can come back to the ground and come back to do to the and follow the counsel of God. God. Look, at, look, 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 look at this here. He said, Jeremiah 20, 20, 23, 21. He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people 
to hear my words then they should have turned from from the evil way and from the evil doings hear it am am i a god at hand saith the lord and not a god afar off hallelujah can any hide himself in secret places that i should not see him said the lord do not i feel heaven and earth said the lord amen so with all the applications we are applying yes they what they are but we have to understand i think we something to we have to really keep in context because we wrestle not against flesh and blood and we can be overtaken very easy and go all the way out and even forget and not even realize that we have come out of the faith and we have gone away yes. because those principalities and powers they are real they are, they real. are real they are real and as as we did with the unclean spirit when he come back he come back with several more spirit worse than himself and the last time it was on the first now the first time when you heard the word of god you 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 rebuke satan out of your life and you came to god now the seven more spirits in you now he don't mind if you talk about god now Be, as long as you don't rebuke him so you might not think you need deliverance so you're not telling the devil to get out of you you just trying to pretend now that you're christian <laughs> while you're not christian really but i um mm-hmm. to be honest with you i am blaming some people there are persons that sit in those churches and they they know they know better better they ha- they can discern they 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 will give you the whole story of this person not doing the right thing that they know and they know but yet still they sit right they there. will sit right there and don't say a word and the word of god says if you see your brother at a fault you who are strong spiritual, you spiritual you one. need to restore such a one and we don't people don't do it they don't do it now i want to just put something out as just my disclaimer right now i am not saying on under no circumstances that the churches doesn't need money i am not saying this what i'm saying is that the focus the focus needs i mean church on the whole need to be a all-rounded body in terms of the teaching it needs to be um, rounded in everything not on one thing because if you are just preaching and teaching on one thing it's not a balance the one side is going to be heavier than the other and it's going to create a problem so if you are balanced then everything is going to be fine like i said if you are doing your work and you're doing your work right you don't have to worry about the tithes and offering and to be always badging the people on the tithes and offering you don't have to do it it is just like a man in his household the word of god says to be the head of your house that you are in charge you are a provider of your house if this man does this he has nothing to worry about because why he is doing his job he has faith in god he has faith in god he's doing his job because he knows well look i don't care i am going to do my work because that's and god and say i will never leave he you he will not forsake, not forsake you. you if you're doing my work i will take care of you is the same principle involved for the pastors because he said that they are the head of the church So if you are there and you are not doing your work you are an infidel and what you'll have to do is begging and begging and begging for money because why there is no fit there's no faith in god you are not doing your work you are not fearful of the lord there's no wisdom there there's no wisdom we need to know this We need to know this. The, right now to me I feel somebody may say different, but right now I feel we are closing in. It is crunch time right now and we need to know the word of God. We need to know the things that we have to do. For example, put in the whole armor of God. You don't hear those things preaching in t- in churches. Every Sunday you go, you hear tithes and offering, tithes and offering, tithes and offering. <laughs> but I mean, come on! Yeah, hallelujah! Well, how did we get up on that? Yeah, it, 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 it's yeah. it's in the same path. I'm playing They're not with you. Fear. Yeah, just reflect the past. They're how not fearful of God. If mm. those people and even everybody, I'm not leaving myself out of it. We are all yeah, in the fear, equation. If we fear if God, we're going to do what is right. We're going to do what is right. And so we, we can don't only fear have God to. If we have met God, and we don't have to do the extra things that we're doing, whatever extra we're going to do, we're going to do it for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Amen. So that's what we're sharing this afternoon. I thank my wife for that peace. It's a great peace. And of course, once we have encountered God, then we can learn to fear Him because it will be necessary to fear God because you really know that He is real and He's not a joke. He's not going to play with you. You know it for sure. And it's a reverent kind of fear. It's not like you feel like you're scared, but you just know that He's you're real, reverent. He's mighty, He's great, and you're reverent. It's so like it's a reverent prayer for God. It's like, that God for is God. example, you respect your Father you love your father and you are not going to bring any man in your father's house when he's not around because why you are not married you cannot do what married people do so you know it is not acceptable you are gonna leave this alone you're gonna come home you're gonna do your homework you're gonna help around do something and that will be that now this is what it is if you fear god you're gonna do what he asks of you to do if you have met the if man if you have met the man because that's what it and is the, the key element you. is the key element is if you have met the man and and that's what that's why our is about our testimony if we have met Christ then we have no other choice or recourse but to operate as if we do because we know the person absolutely hallelujah amen now i have said enough i want to leave you with this Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. If there is no fear, there is no foundation of wisdom. This is what I want to leave you today with. Ponder on this. I'm going to repeat it. The fear of the Lord is the foundation for wisdom. If you're building a house, you don't have a strong foundation, you have no house at all. Because any little wind, any water, anything that comes in, this house will come crashing down. So, you need to build that foundation, that strong foundation with that fear of the Lord. Amen. And then wisdom comes in. All right. I think the, I think the favorite scripture for the day is Ecclesiastes 12, 13, as you said. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. Amen. Amen. And that commandment to love your neighbor as yourself, love each other, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and dispense the word of God, that is love for God. Because God wishes for none to perish. None to perish. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the King. Amen. Hallelujah. 22 minutes on the other side of the 6 o'clock. Indeed, my wife, you just definitely start going and going and going and going. And we thank God for Jesus. Amen. Hey, um, Karina and Sabina, good evening to you guys. We know you're listening on Grace peace unto you guys over there at um, Spotlight. Amen. Miss Napa and the entire family. Everybody online, wherever you are across the world, we thank you so much for tuning into Choice Radio. Your life, your salvation, your choice. And the battle is real, brethren. Amen. The warfare is real. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. If we find that we are not effective as a Christian, we need to ask for deliverance. We need to make sure that we are delivered, that we can come out of the darkness and we can truly walk in the light and we can be exposed to the light. We don't need to start play church and keep playing church and playing church. The devil don't mind if you want to play church. He couldn't care less. You want to play church? Let us play church together. As long as you don't rebuke him, he is okay with it. He understands it's his last days. He don't mind hearing about God. As once as you're not kicking him out. Once you're not kicking him out, he don't mind. <laughs> he don't mind staying right there with you as long as you are not going to kick him out. The, Amen. Bless the, the Lord. The devil is not afraid of church. I, no, I'll well, tell you this. Well, he <laughs> sit. He has this sit there. <laughs> <laughs> he has this sit oh, there very God. close to the altar. <laughs> it might sound comical, but it is the truth. The it word of God truth, says of it. The devil is not afraid of church. You know what the devil is afraid of? He's afraid of you are spirit field. Spirit field. What about the blood. Yes. <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost field? <laughs> Jesus on your mind. <laughs> that is what the devil is afraid of. He, refu he is afraid of of you rebuking him mm -hmm. rebuking him asking him to flee because the word of god says to resist him and he will flee if you don't resist him and you're there trying yourself playing yourself and putting on cat suit and think is 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 his pajamas <laughs> you have on sorry he is going to sit right there and he's going to give you a amen, good laugh amen. and like i always say 
the devil has no friends. You, you know, and my wife, um, you know, before we finish this segment, you know, I was looking at this um, thing with the with the the funeral and stuff for the people that got in the shooting, and the president was there, and he started singing the song, and everybody in the church like give you some kind of some kind of Broadway show. I'm just. I'm just thinking. I'm. Um, I'm just thinking. What kind of kind of stuff is that? Uh-huh. I mean, in the sense that, so it's a church. The church is the, still the church. So because it's the present, so what? He sing amazing grace. So what? Sing amazing grace. Sing amazing grace and break down. Sing amazing grace. Let's hear you. You need amazing grace. Sing amazing grace and sing the song. We want to listen with you. Sing amazing <laughs> grace. But everybody want to clap and like. I mean, people just don't. I mean. I just say people these people are not spiritual man if you spiritual trust me I don't care who you are you sing amazing grace so what you sing amazing they're grace so sing amazing flow. grace they're, going, they're the going with the flow the flesh the flesh the yeah. flesh that's emotion flesh hallelujah bless the name of the Lord Jesus amen hallelujah amen so amen we, we give him praise we give him honor we give him glory that caller want to call you can go ahead and call back if you want to call if you want to share something in the segment but um, that's not the segment right now, really. So, <laughs> anyhow, amen. But my, my wife, any final final words on this conversation? Any final word in this conversation right now? Hallelujah! We bless the Lord. We thank you for that peace this afternoon. The fear of the Lord, amen. Fear of the Lord. But the overall, to me, you cannot fear something that you don't know. You cannot fear something that you never encounter. Somebody say, "Oh, it's snowing in America. It's cold." And say like, "Oh, come on, it's cold in America." You back home, you never been to America here, but cold. You say, oh, "What cold are you talking about? Cold? Are we cold? You think it is cold like when in in December a little cold? Now we say we cold. Our, our fingers feel like it's falling off. You don't have a clue because you've never been here. You never experienced this cold. So hearing about it, you just thinking oh yeah probably it's like in december you know uh, you know feel like a little cold you know they don't have a clue what you're talking about when you say it's cold in america so it's the same thing when we t- sometimes we talk about god somebody think why are they making a big deal about this god i believe god i go to church you know what's what's all this big deal about they i can like this i know god you know i read my bible you know you don't know <laughs> go ahead go ahead <laughs> yes um we have not seen him um to say well physically seen him but we know that he lives in us and one thing i i must say that when you have an encounter with him an encounter with our lord and savior you will be a different person an encounter you must be a different person and my prayer today is for each and every one of us that are in this christian family and those who are coming in to experience this encounter with our lord and savior experience that because once you get that experience your life will never be the same and if you try to change it the enemy will kill you because he knows what you got hallelujah you have a reverent fear for god yes a reverent just a loving reverent fear that he's yep. king of kings and lord almighty of god lord of lord he can do everything anything and he's real as ever and that's where the fear need to be put in that context that is a reverent fear not mm-hmm. fear like oh man scared no 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 just a reverent fear that he is god and he's great i am and you know amen hallelujah all right so my wife we got the well we have only one one, one reader Yes. It's easy to give that cake away to <laughs> Miss Lata Badir. And I thank her for being faithful and calling in and, and sharing with the reading. And we are encouraged every time. Amen. So, my sister, we thank you so much for calling and reading, being brave to lift up the name of Jesus. And that's all it's about. Amen. So, even if nobody call, hey, amen. <laughs> if nobody call, we we still here. We lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. Those who are on one accord with us and they're in the spirit of God and they want to call and lift up the name of Jesus, we understand. Amen. So, we thank you so much. It doesn't. It's not going to change us. It's not going to change nothing. We just know who we are in Christ. And that's all it's about. And those who know who they are in Christ, that's all it's about. Proud to lift up his name under every condition. So, Mr. Abedee, congratulations to you. Hallelujah. You want to pray us out, baby? Hallelujah. You want me to pray? All right. All right. Father, we just thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God. I don't care how far we have fallen off, God. If we are willing, God, to come before you and confess to you, you are willing to pick us up again. Father, we thank you that you are always there to hear us, God. We thank you that you are always looking for us, God. All our infirmities, all our weakness, in all the areas, God, where we are weak, God, you are able to be our strength, Father. We pray that every listener, every hearer, 
of the word God today in, in the name of Jesus is able to come to the acknowledgement that you are God and you are God alone and they will have that reverent prayer for you when they have encountered you and asked you to come into their hearts that you can rule and reign with them God. We thank you for every listener of Choice Radio Almighty God. We pray that they will listen with their heart and understand that we mean well. Our intention is not to try to, to, to make anybody feel less but to make us understand the promise that you have for all of us and your wish is that for none of us to perish almighty God that we can come into your truth into your wisdom into your knowledge we're not going to take you for granted we're going to take it as it is hallelujah he said anytime we hear your voice we should never harden our heart so we pray God that our hearts would not be hardened Lord to your truth to your word God because it's appointed unto man once to die and then come the judgment so Father God we pray as we come into your knowledge we come into your reality we come into your truth as we hear the testimonies almighty god of who you are and what we what you expect of us god that we will line up to your word that we can see you in all your glory in our life we can experience the abundant life in christ jesus so father we thank you we give you all praise all honor and all glory all belong to you in jesus name amen and amen all right guys so be blessed of the lord we thank you so much um I don't know what you're showing me. The salvation prayer. All right. So we're going to do the salvation prayer as we conclude. If you're out there in Radio Land and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to ask you today to make that decision. Just go ahead and do it. Amen. I meet many people say, well, I, when I'm ready, you know, all that could be true. Probably you say you're ready and then when you're ready, you're alive to be ready and you know when you're ready. But no man knows the hour. Anytime you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Yeah. Um, you just don't know. Say, saying that salvation prayer today, it must just be that ticket for you because you may never see tomorrow and i remember this this man that uh, my husband gave to um say the salvation prayer which was not even um like a month ago there about and um the day after or two days after this man passed so you may be or even myself may be in that um, situation and you never know that salvation prayer probably that one thing that will help you so i urge that um if you are listening right now to believe in your heart say it with all of your heart as we um say this prayer you repeat it and you mean it from the bottom of your heart so honey you can go ahead hallelujah i like when you call me honey that's sounds good. All right. Amen. All right. Um, let's say the prayer right now. Dear God. Dear God. I admit that I am a sinner. I admit that I am a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ. Died in my place. Died in my place. Paying the penalty for my sins. Paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now. I am willing right now. To turn from my sins. To turn from my sins. And to accept Jesus Christ. And to accept Jesus Christ. As my personal Savior and Lord. As my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you i commit myself to you and ask you and ask you to send the holy spirit to send the holy spirit into my life into my life to fill me to fill me and to take control and to take control and to help me become and to help me become the kind of person the kind of person you want me to be you want me to be and i thank you father and i thank you father for loving me for loving me in jesus name in jesus name amen and amen amen hallelujah Amen. Anybody have said that prayer right now, we thank you for saying that prayer because that could be your ticket out of here in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we thank you so much, guys, in the name of Jesus. Ask God to lead you to a Bible-believing church and start reading your Bible. God will show himself in you. Amen. In a mighty way. So be blessed of the Lord. Any final shout out to you before you leave? Any final shout out? That's it. All right. Good. That's it. You're shaking your head. They could hear you shaking your head. <laughs> oh no! Um, I just want to. Of course, I let you let me. If you insist, then I will. <laughs> I just want to send a shout out to my friend Andrea Alcid Napper. If you're listening, which I know you are, continue doing what you're doing best, loving the Lord and searching His Word and getting yourself drunk, not on wine and liquor, but on the Word of God. You continue doing the good work, and of course, shout out to all my brothers and sisters in each. each CC Andrea um, 
Anne Marie, every single person. I don't want to start mentioning name and I forget somebody's name. So <laughs> I will stop on Anne Marie. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. God bless you guys. Stay encouraged. Stay blessed. And just remember that God's hand is not short. It's always long to reach out to each and every one of us. Long Yay. <laughs> All right, guys. Good night. to the choice radio your life your salvation your choice jesus is lord don't forget to download our mobile app go to your market and look for choice gospel radio and share it with everyone choice radio your life your salvation your choice every believer in jesus christ needs a source of encouragement and information Choice Gospel Network is here for you. Dial and save this number, 213-493-0146. Again, 213-493-0146. Or log on to www.choicegospelnetwork.com. And please share it with someone. to Choice Radio everywhere. Log in to www.choicegospelnetwork.com or listen on your phone by dialing 213-493-0146. You can also download the TuneIn Radio app on your cell phone and look for the Choice Radio and enjoy the sounds of praises. (laughs) 